store time about when a customer only wanted a man to help her. When I was about 20 years old, I was a department manager in a big box hardware store. People said I acted 25, but I didn't even look 18. As a young female, I saw my fair amount of sexual discrimination, but the worst always came from women. This is the story of one such woman. I managed the paint department. I had three associates who worked for me. They loved me as a boss because I bought them a department radio and took the shifts that they didn't want. I worked Friday clothes and Saturday made so my two younger guys could have time to have fun on Friday nights and the older gentlemen took early Saturday morning so they could sleep off their fun. In trade, I gave the older gentleman his ideal schedule. My team was awesome. One day, I was in the department alone and a lady came up and asked me where she could find the five-gallon oil-based primer. I let her know that my location didn't carry the five-gallon size of that primer. She told me that we did and said that it was shelved right there while suggesting I was too stupid to remember. I let her know that another location had exactly what she was looking for and that it was in fact in the exact location in that store. She let me know how stupid she thought that I was for thinking that she could mix up stores. Then, she began yelling loudly insisting that I get a man out there to help her because she wanted someone competent and not stupid little girl. Her husband actually tried to step in at that point, but I just smiled and let her know that a male paint associate would be clocking in any minute and I would be happy to direct him to her as soon as he's on the clock. I smiled and waited for Joe to clock in. Joe was great and I knew that he could handle this or I wouldn't have put him in this situation, but Joe was also new. He was learning things super quick, but still relied on the rest of us for help. When I saw Joe walking up, I quickly said that there was a customer who needed help. I let him know that she was super upset and asked him to do his best to answer her questions. Joe walked up to the lady. She said, Finally, a man. She asked her question, explained where the product should be, and waited. Joe calmly let her know that he had never seen us carry five gallon size of oil-based primer, but said that he could check with the paint department manager. She was happy and loudly said that she was happy to be getting some real help. Joe walked up to me and started asking me about the five gallon oil-based primers. The lady quickly walked up and asked him what he was doing. He turned and said, this is my manager, she runs the department. The husband laughed out loud, the woman stormed off, and I bought Joe lunch. Imagine meeting up with someone online only for them to end up being an active serial killer. Heather Saul was a sex worker in West Virginia when she came across a man online who wanted to be her client. It's unclear whether Heather took him on as a client, but the man did end up getting her address and showing up to her home. As soon as he gained entry, he attacked Heather by strangling her, pointing a weapon at her, and telling her that he'd kill her if she didn't comply with his orders. He then points the weapon to her side and says to her, live or die. She trusts her gut and thinks to herself that if he was going to use it on her, he would have by now, and in those few seconds of silence, she decided to fight for her life. The man lunges on top of her and sits on her chest, not letting her breathe. Somehow, she manages free and spots a nearby tool, grabs it, and swings it at the man. He then sets his gun down in order to grab the tool from her and overpower her, which is when she grabs his weapon and immediately shoots him. He slowly falls to the ground, deceased. Heather's back was broken and her shoulder was dislocated, but she went to the neighbors and told them to call 911. She was hysterical when police arrived. When they searched the man's body, they found four sets of handcuffs, but what they found in his car is even more chilling. This man had a full-on kill kit in his car, foreshadowing what could have happened to Heather if he had been able to subdue and rape her. The kill kit contained numerous weapons along with duct tape, a shovel, garbage bags, and a tub big enough to fit an adult woman with bleach and other cleaning supplies. Police were able to link this kill kit to a total of nine women who were either murdered or disappeared across three states. This man's name was Neil Falls. He was born in 1969 and always had a troubled past. Around the 2000s is when he was caught abusing animals and in 2008 he was asked to quit a job after sexually harassing a co-worker. On the driver's side floor, Falls left behind a significant piece of information. There was a list written down of women's names along with their ages. It's believed that those were his next intended victims of Heather Saul having killed him in self-defense. She was never charged for any crimes and became a media sensation after this. She was brave enough to fight off her attacker, bringing an end to an active serial killer and saving multiple women from suffering a grisly fate. I'm 34 and currently about six months pregnant. I'm pregnant with me and my husband's second child. Me and my mother-in-law honestly have a pretty bitter relationship. She doesn't approve of me or my family background. When I was having my first child, my husband had asked me if I'd consider letting my mother-in-law be in the delivery room. I told him absolutely not and afterwards, he never really brought it up. I ended up having my husband and my mother there with me as support. Me and my husband are now discussing about who I want in the delivery room and I told him it was fine with the same arrangement I had last time. My husband was clearly not happy about the decision as I could clearly hear him mumbling something under his breath. I asked if he had a problem with the arrangement. He actually spoke and claimed that he did. He stated it was massively unfair that I would allow my mother in the delivery room, but not his. He mentioned that since I got to choose who was in the delivery room last time, he should get to choose who gets to be inside of the room this time. I told him that he was insane if he thought that I would let his mother see me in extreme pain. It would be an incredibly uncomfortable situation. He was incredibly upset and left the house. I've been trying his friends to see if they've seen him recently, but without any luck. I contacted my mother-in-law and she said that she absolutely had no idea that my husband wanted her in the delivery room in the first place and she hasn't heard from him in a while. I'm honestly kind of freaking out both from stress and guilt. I'm worried that my husband isn't okay, but I also can't help feeling guilty that I drove him away. I don't know if I should stay with my current decision anymore. Am I the asshole for telling my husband that if he wants my mother-in-law in the delivery room, then he can't be there either? I have a friend named Paul that has been my 26 roommate for a little over a year now. We've been good friends since college and we've also maintained our friend group from college as well. Recently, I started to notice something odd. My underwear has been frequently disappearing and reappearing in my drawer. 
At first, I didn't notice anything, but occasionally I would notice that some pairs that were supposed to be clean had a strange smell. I started to get really suspicious after a while, especially after I brought it up to Paul and he just shrugged me off at first, but I started getting really weird vibes after some arguing back and forth, and Paul finally admitted very reluctantly to the truth. Apparently, Paul has been stealing my underwear, wearing them, and putting them back in the drawer, with what I'm assuming is the hope that I end up wearing them too. When I found this out, my skin crawled. I'm honestly a very open-minded person and I wouldn't have a problem with Paul wearing Lindsay's underwear if they weren't mine, and he also confessed that he had been doing it for months. I felt so violated by this and I told him that he would have to leave immediately. Luckily, he agreed and left that night and has been crashing on a work friend's couch while he looks for a new place. He said that he was really embarrassed and understood why I was no longer comfortable being friends with him. The only thing that he requested was I not tell our mutual friends. But I couldn't not tell him considering they were all wondering why Paul had to leave so suddenly and why we weren't friends anymore. They knew something had gone down and when they asked, I just told them because I honestly needed support about the whole thing and I also knew there was no way I would be able to keep hanging out in the group if Paul was going to be there. Everyone was really shocked and understood my decision. Paul confronted me over text about it, telling me that I was wrong to share his kink with the whole group and that it was his private information. But I told him that I was allowed to tell my friends about how his actions affected me considering he went against my privacy and violated not only my trust but also my person. Am I the asshole for telling my friend group about another friend's king so they would also stop being friends with him? I'm 17 and I have a sister named Emma 22 and a stepsister Yuna 22. They never got along well. I literally grew up with my sister talking shit about Yuna and how she just had an easier life because she was pretty. It's never been a secret that my sister thought that and our parents think that too so whenever Yuna was here no one really tried to make an effort with her because she has it easy. I did my best to change this as I grew up but Emma never did. It actually got worse. Nevertheless she's still my sister and I love her. Emma also has always been the golden child so she always got away with lots of stuff. When they were 19 Yuna started dating this guy. I don't want to go into the details but he was just no good at all. Through this Yuna stopped working since he said that he wouldn't date a slut. Literally said that in front of us, no one, sadly including me, said anything. She started skipping classes, stopped going out with her friends, and coming to family dinners as often. It was really bad. Recently, they finally broke up though. I don't know what happened and it isn't my business nor anyone else's, but Yuna came to stay with us so the three of us are living together with our parents again. On Tuesday, we all went out to have dinner when Emma started questioning Yuna about her relationship. Just being there was uncomfortable already and Yuna would refuse to talk so Emma kept insisting and our parents were pressuring her to talk too, which was awkward as fuck. It all escalated quickly and soon enough, Yuna started crying and just left to go outside. I went with her and she was sobbing so violently, I legit thought she would have a panic attack or something. I stayed with her until her Uber came. She didn't want to go with the family and then went back to the table and I was just raging. Now this is where I might be the asshole. I started screaming at Emma about how she's a bitch and how she knows how hurtful her questions were and how she's always done this blah blah blah. I also screamed at my parents for allowing it but mostly I just screamed at Emma. She didn't say or do anything at all and we ended up leaving. My parents are so mad at me and Yuna now and I was punished. I can't see my friends for a few weeks and Emma just keeps calling me names. I'm not really sorry but I know I could have handled it better or at least screamed in private but I also know that I made a huge scene in public and hurt my sister. Am I the asshole for screaming at my sister in the middle of dinner? I'm 28 and the sole breadwinner in our house and my wife, 32, of two years is a stay-at-home cat parent and we're struggling. She's had plantar fasciitis and PCOS since she was young but nowhere near as bad as recent years. Today, she can barely stand for an hour before feeling extreme pain. We've tried every remedy to no avail and no surgery can help. It's made it basically impossible for her to do traditional paid work on top of not having her license or degree. Manual and retail are right out and the few places that did hire her and try to accommodate her quickly replaced her, leading her to decide on being purely stay-at-home. I also make too much for her household income for her to qualify for disability. I work full-time, but it's still not enough with our expenses. I usually go out door dashing to make up the difference, and that's if it's not preceded by a squabble over how much or how little time I spend with her and how tired I am. She pushes me to take nights off when we need the money and when I know there's lucrative bonuses to be had. I work 9-hour shifts starting at 6.45am, but she often keeps me up until 1am because our preferred sleep schedules are so different, and a point of contention when I even allude to it. It's all had noticeable impacts on my health and sanity. I'm often left too tired to do any cleaning around the house, which, with five cats regularly climbing on everything and making a mess is often difficult, compounded by a bunch of elaborate decorations she's made or bought that just feel more like moving parts to worry about. Any attempt to talk about it just makes things worse between us, since we've developed different ideas on how to do things and what our respective dream home looks like. I've always been more of a minimalist. She put me in charge of finances due to stress and I'm overwhelmed trying to make sure that we have enough in the account. She frequently buys things for the house that we don't particularly need and insists on dining out when we already have plenty of stuff to cook and tends to order out every other day. I've lost so many uncooked chicken breasts to this, which eats away at our savings. Meanwhile, I deliberately go out of my way to avoid spending anything on myself, Despite her telling me to eat, I skip lunch every other day just to save a buck. I consistently tell her not to buy me gifts or throw parties on occasions like my birthday, which I imagine makes me look like a stick in the mud. I even opted out of my workplace's group health insurance just because it would have taken out too much of my check. I'm starting to wonder if this is even sustainable anymore. I honestly don't know what the best course of action here would be. Any input is welcome. I'm at a loss here, guys. 
realistically, I know I'm in the clear. Legally, I'm in the clear. But I'm being vilified by my coworkers and I'm genuinely considering quitting my job because of this mess. So I work a pretty standard day job and at night I help my friend at a restaurant which serves an assortment of Thai cuisine. To be honest, I'm insanely picky but I fell in love with this peanut sauce the main chef makes and he showed me how to make it. So about once a week, I take either noodles or stir fry to my job for lunch. People know this and a handful have tried it. It smells nutty. It tastes nutty. It's a white girl pad thai basically. Lately, my lunches have been disappearing or I'll open my lunchbox and find half of my food missing. I've tried addressing it, but nothing has been changing and I was pretty sure one of the new hires was doing it, but I had no proof until now. The other day I took my noodles and my entire Tupperware was missing, which hasn't happened before. I'm pissed, but what can I do? A coworker shared her pizza with me and that was that, until today. My boss confronted me and accused me of poisoning my noodles because his daughter, one of the new girls, borrowed my lunch and had to be hospitalized. Turns out she's severely allergic to nuts, ate some and boom, anaphylaxis. She used an EpiPen, had to be hospitalized and now her dad is trying to hold me accountable for her bills and condition, but I don't see it. Why should I pay? I don't mark my food as an allergen because I'm not allergic to it. She was just dumb enough to steal from me and eat something that she can't have. But he's being hateful and some of my old co-workers are icing me out because I warned him I report any harassment to HR if he tried anything funny. Brown nosers, I guess. My friend is aware and offered me a full-time job, but I just can't help but feel it's unfair. At the same time, I could have killed his daughter though, so... Am I the asshole for sending my co-worker into anaphylactic shock?